Hi guys, greetings from Germany. This is Valentine. It's October right now. The weather is great this weekend and I'm outside enjoying the weather, getting some sun because this is gonna probably be the last weekend uh, where we'll have such a beautiful weather. I hope that will be maybe some more weekends, but uh, it's really not sure. So I'm trying to enjoy the weather. Now the topic of this video is interviews and this is a series of videos uh, where I'm trying to answer your questions regarding how to get a job as a web developer in Germany and so let's dig into interviews in this video. So I'm gonna talk from my own experience while applying at different companies uh, but from the other perspective as well like interviewing candidates for similar positions. So I've been in different kind of companies starting from like really small startups that were just starting to like more established companies with like two or three hundred people. Uh, to be honest I haven't interviewed with any like very big, very big players in the industry like Google or Microsoft or SAP or you name it. I never got any rejections after an interview so I'd managed the interview to really demonstrate my skills and to be confident and it went uh, very well for me so this is why I'm trying to share my experience on how it went. So the way it usually goes is that you submit your application with all the information, your um, CV and everything and usually uh, companies in Germany are maybe not that fast as you would expect them to be so it might take a couple of weeks until you get an answer. If like for example four weeks have passed and you still haven't heard from them, um, yeah, the, the chances are that are not interested in you. So don't take them personally. They probably have a lot of candidates and maybe your skill, maybe your skill set is not that good. Um, if you just want to be sure that this is the case, uh, basically there's nothing to lose. So you can maybe just simply give them a call and say, hey, I submitted an application like four weeks ago. My name is John Doe and can you tell me what's the current status of it? Do I get rejected? Have you received my information or something like that? So after four weeks there's basically nothing to lose so you should do that. Let's take now the happy case that you actually get an email or most usually you will get a call from somebody saying hey we received your application and we would like to invite you for an interview. So yeah congratulations for making that step and yeah you are a step further in the funnel. Now there are two types of interviews. You can get an interview by phone or by Skype or you can get invited to or like on in-person on-site interview. Now interviews over the phone or Skype are getting more common um, and this might happen because of two factors. Uh, the first one would be like the distance. So if you're not in the same city or in the vicinity of the city where you're applying for that job and to get there would be like a very large time investment and even a financial investment then it can benefit really both parties if you first uh, discuss some information over the phone and this saves a lot of time and everything. The second reason for an interview over the phone would be because there are a lot of candidates and they are trying to like limit the number of candidates they invite for an on-site interview and in, uh, from this perspective the total amount of time that's invested in that point. Generally speaking, the phone interview is not very different uh, from the normal on-site interview. It generally tends to be a bit more shorter and, um, as I said, has the intention of narrowing the pipeline. It's like more, not you. You'll probably not directly get the job uh, by phone, so you will still have to do the on-site interview but it's more like to limit the number of people. So in case somebody directly calls you and you don't feel prepared for that interview, that shouldn't really happen. They, you usually, you know, either somebody will call you and send you an email to like have a fixed date when this will happen. So if they're trying to do this like spontaneous, you can just uh, politely decline and say, I cannot really talk so long right now. Can we uh, yeah, schedule a phone call a bit later today or some other day? So that you have some time to prepare and um, so that you have some time to prepare. Additionally it's important that uh, you're in a quiet place where you can hear and be heard uh, clearly 
or if you're doing it by Skype, make sure that you have a good internet connection, that you're sitting in a quiet room. Um, I would highly suggest that you turn on your webcam so that they can get a better impression of you on how you look because all the information that the company has about you is really a piece of paper or a PDF document and they're trying to see what kind of person are you and uh, I think showing an image of you in a Skype conference can be beneficial. Now let's talk about an on-site in-person interview. So usually it goes like that, you'll get a phone call or uh, you'll get an email with the information uh, when is the interview scheduled and it would be very nice uh, if you would uh, confirm it either by phone or by email so that it's settled on both parties. Uh, so that email usually contains information like where you have to go or who is your contact person or who you have to ask about. Uh, most likely the person in human resources, you'll have most likely you'll have a person in human resources or your contact person. But in the emails will also be information like who else will be in the interview and with their names and position. So my advice in that case would be to Google them in advance to know who are you interviewing with. So usually we'll have like somebody from management, somebody from human resources, uh, somebody from the department where we'll be working and it's no more than two or three persons. I found it, uh, find it quite difficult if there are more persons in the room, um, but you should expect uh, it will be not a one-on-one -on -one interview or something like that. Usually it isn't. Now, a very important question would be like what to wear in the interview. And since we're talking about a job in the IT sector, uh, usually there isn't a dress code, but it depends a lot on the, on the company. So most likely if you are like in a financial institution, like a bank or something like that, there's a high probability that you need to wear a suit and tie. But if you're like in a more normal software development company or just the IT department in a company producing software internally, um, there's a big chance that uh, like jeans and whatever would be like fine. I would generally say it's uh, much more important to wear something that you feel comfortable with. Of course, it doesn't hurt if you wear a suit and tie or just a jacket, uh, a shirt and some jeans. As long as you look professional, as long as you look good, look and smell good, uh, that will certainly not be a problem. Um, even if you wear a tie and suit, it doesn't mean in the future that you will have to show up exactly that way with a tie and suit. Um, it's more like showing, okay, I know how to dress and um, in case we have any customer contacts or something like that, I'll be able to dress properly for a meeting. So I don't think there's any problems. If you want to wear that, I think the main problem would be if you dress something that you don't normally dress, because that will tear very easily, so we'll probably appear at the interview, I don't know, all sweaty, feeling not comfortable, and this will not play well overall. So even if you're in a suit, your overall performance probably won't be that good. Um, if you're still very unsure and uncomfortable about this, um, maybe try to get the opportunity to ask the person, your contact person in the human resources department, that's like be very honest and very look I'm this is my probably my first application in Germany I don't know your company so well um, what would you recommend me to to do in that case what should I wear for the interview do you have a dress code so just being honest and telling that you don't have the experience uh, in that field can just get you a very straight answer and say yeah generally the management really likes to see people in a suit so it's you know, take your chance with that question. If you feel comfortable asking it, do it. If not, um, as I said, generally my tip is um, dress smart, dress casual, business casual, whatever fits you well, whatever makes you really look good and sharp. And most importantly, what makes you comfortable and powerful because you will need to show in the interview that you're a very confident person. Now the next part is very important. Uh, be there on time, be punctual. Uh, so try to account for any delays that might occur, like the train is delayed or cancelled by an hour or whatever. Uh, time to find a parking place, uh, 
problems on the autobahn or whatever any other reasons that might cause you a delay uh, try to factor everything in and be there on time um, if you arrive early just stay in your car or go to a nearby coffee place or something like that try to chill out for a second but in any case don't appear there late and if this is the case if you think that you are going to be late uh, try to give them a call in advance so that they know uh, what's going on and what's happening with you. But that should be like the least possible scenario. Don't, don't be late. Now, from another perspective, uh, don't be there very early. So don't show up half an hour before your actual scheduled interview because that's going to be kind of weird. But it's totally fine and I would highly recommend that you are like five minutes before that you go like just enter the company or just enter the reception desk and say hi my name is I have an interview with blah blah blah. So I mean this with five minutes before this is like the German punctuality so if you are on time you are already great. Really if you are just arrive there in the a second before the interview has to start and maybe you need to go to the toilet or need to do something else or need to just be there five to ten minutes earlier don't just show up in the last second because uh, that might give you a bad imp that might give a bad impression so next you arrive at the, at the reception desk you tell your name and who are you having the interview with usually you can just say uh, the human resources person that you've been in contact with and probably the person at the reception will be able to lead you to the room where the interview will take place. Um, right in the beginning, you'll probably be the only one in the room. You'll be offered like a glass of water or something to drink. And basically in a very short time, the other persons who are attending the interview as well will be joining you. So in the beginning there will be like a bit of chit chat, how did you get here, did you arrive well and you will just try to make a bit of a conversation to say well the traffic was horrible or I had a problem finding a parking place or you know, everything went well or whatever so you like take a couple of minutes maybe make some remarks maybe if the office is nice you can just say very nice office or very nice building or interesting surroundings or whatever just uh, just try to make some uh, com just try to communicate a bit at the beginning so that you can loosen up and uh, get started in the actual interview now before I continue with what's happening interview let's get very straight about one point before you enter the interview one day two days or sometime in advance prepare yourself for the interview allocate some time don't just go in overconfident like I know everything Nothing will surprise me, I've did interviews in my life. Be prepared. And this includes stuff like reading again the job description and maybe pointing out some questions that you may later have regarding the job description. But also try to get informed about the company. Try to find out what are they actually doing right now. What's their business model? How are they making money? What's their most important customers? What technologies are they using so try to get a feeling of uh, what's going on there and there's so much there's a lot there are a lot of resources online where you can just uh, type in the company name and you will find those information uh, study their website go through every section where they may be publishing news or anything like that a company profile go over that read this information try to figure out what they're doing how is uh, IT relevant for them and um, generally try to be uh, very informed about the company you're applying to. I once was in an interview when I've been asked like well how do you think our solution actually works or something like that and um, I made some ideas or I had some ideas on how their business model and how this uh, works from a technical point of view and I would sort of explain it how would I imagine that this is the case so I haven't really found online uh, this is how we exactly do it because it will be like their internal stuff but I figured out how it can work and I explained them what is my opinion on how stuff how things work at them and uh, I got like a reaction from and the reaction from them was like whoa this is the best description we ever got from a candidate before so yeah bonus points for me and in this case 
if you get such questions or where you have to prove that you're really interested in their company, uh, this is a way you can really demonstrate that. Now, additionally, I never got any like the kind of stupid questions that you sometimes see online, like what are your weaknesses, what are your strengths, uh, what do you like, what you don't like, whatever. I uh, really had just normal interviews where like people discussing where both parties are interesting in knowing what's happening, what's the skill set, how's the person like, and not like uh, where do you see yourself in five years or what are your goals in life or whatever bullshit uh, you will find some in some interviews. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be prepared for such questions. So I will link some uh, articles from uh, German websites which you will need to translate with Google Translate to get some, uh, some of these questions. So at least you know them and you can prepare at home to have at least a decent answer. Additionally, it's important that you bring your own questions. So think in advance what you would like to learn about the job. Uh, a job description doesn't really tell you much. So it's good to ask, well, how big is my team or how big is the entire department? Uh, who I'll be working with? Uh, what's the age maybe of the people in, uh, in the average that I'm working with? Uh, are there any sp particular customers that I will be working with or whatever anything that's not clear or interesting from you uh, just try to ask the questions in a smart way uh, at the same time demonstrating that you're interested in this job this is not like uh, you know some other job where you're applying where you have no idea just try to get uh, your, your questions cleared and this job interview is a great opportunity not to only answer questions but to ask them questions as well and you can even ask uh, like how, how do you like the company or uh, have has the company developed in a positive way in the recent part or it's uh, what are the problems that the company is facing right now do you have enough developers or do you have you're looking for a lot of developers are do you have a lot uh, like a people leaving the company and you you know, you can ask this way to get more inside information on what's going on there. Be prepared to answer a question like, why did you apply for this job? Why did you select this company? And uh, this is not like a cheesy question. It should be answered in a very good way. So think in advance what you're going to answer uh, on this question. And usually you should think about a combination on why do you think this company is a good company and what can you bring? Uh, why does it fit you or something like that? And try to not give answers like, well, I like that the company is located in Berlin or I like that the company is not far away from my home or my girlfriend recently moved to Berlin and I'm looking at a company in Berlin and I found you, so great. It's not the kind of answer they would like to hear, so um, be prepared to give them a better answer to that question. And I'm not meaning by that to be untruthful, but uh, to make the best out of it, to be, to be honest, but to think from a business perspective, why should they hire you and uh, to demonstrate that this, in, this isn't just another company and you really took some time to... Uh, you really took some time and really thought about applying for this company. But, so let's get back to the interview. Now, the first part, somebody either from management or from human resources or from your department will uh, start with something that looks very much like a monologue. It will explain uh, what's the business model of the company, what are they doing, um, Generally, what kind of products do they have? What kind of projects are they currently uh, handling? And blah, 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 stuff like that. Uh, with the most part of it, you should be very familiar. Uh, this is not uh, the part where you would like uh, interrupt to ask, ask questions. Uh, if you notice something that you would like to ask, just make a quick note or a quick remark. Uh, you can have like uh, a piece of paper or so a, a small notebook with you where you can just uh, write some stuff down if you're interested in anything. So uh, the first part you will just get uh, a monologue because uh, the person doing it probably has done it uh, a lot in the past and it's sort of on autopilot. So try to look interested in what you're telling and maybe just make a simple nod or make a small remark like interesting or something like that so that it's not uh, really a monologue but you will get your chance a bit later to ask any questions that you might have. After this, there will be the second 
part of the interview where you will talk about yourself. So usually in the beginning you will get like a very broad question where you can just start to tell them what you've previously done. So they can either ask you, tell us about your previous job or tell us about uh, previous projects that you work in. Or uh, if you're just uh, coming from the university, you can just talk about your final thesis or something like that, what kind of projects you have built there or anything like this. So this is really the opportunity to present yourself in a positive light. So you really need to take advantage of it. And this is a very good part where you can easily prepare at home. So uh, get a friend or get somebody and put a friend, ask the friend to ask you this question and you will try to explain him what you have previously done. And you will see that this uh, may, might sound easy, but it actually requires a bit of practice. So practice it in advance because you will really get the benefits out of it in the interview. So be prepared to answer. So be prepared to explain what you have done in the past, how complex were the projects, with how many people you have worked, what kind of a technology stack you have used, and anything like that that demonstrates uh, what exactly you have done for that project. Were, were, were you the only one actually working on a project, or if it was a bigger team, what exactly was your role? How much did you contribute to that project? Was uh, your job like more maintaining the code, or you were actually actively building and uh, constructing that application or working on those projects. You should really double down on the skills that you are looking for and uh, you can get this information from the job description or from any, anything else, any other information that you find on a website. So if they are looking somebody knowing a specific technology or something that they are particularly looking for, try to emphasize how exactly you used that technology in your previous job. And if it happens that they actually don't use the same technologies which you've used in the past, try to emphasize that you understand the underlying principles of the technologies that you're using that you maybe don't know, but uh, just say you have experience with other tools and that you are confident that you will be able to learn these new tools or new technologies that uh, they are using because they're quite similar to what you have used in the past. But at the same time, do not try to uh, sort of... Uh, say, well, the tools that you're using are pretty old or pretty, I don't know, dumb, I wouldn't use them, they are stupid or something like that, what I've used was much better. Uh, don't, don't go this angle, you'll have enough time to change anything. If you're getting the job, you will be able to see why they haven't selected a different path, but uh, just to like shoot at them and saying what you're using is, uh, sorry, uh, just to shoot at them and saying what you're using is not really good or it's outdated, doesn't really help you in the short run and that would be to actually win them or in this interview. It's important that you are honest, so do not try to be somebody you are not. Uh, if being asked something, try to ask every... If you're being asked something, try to answer it as honestly as possible because uh, people interviewing other people, they really have a lot of experience and they can easily tell if you're lying or if you're somehow not telling the truth or uh, improving it in a way that's more favorable to you. So it's uh, much better if you're just uh, a, a simple and just answer truthfully everything that you're being asked. So next, uh, you should expect in the interview to be like uh, in the middle of it. This will be like the part uh, where, let's call it, it will be like a ping pong. You, you, um, you're being asked questions and you ask questions yourself or ask for clarifications on, on some matters. And because you're gonna be involved in this discussion uh, and you will, get, you will get a lot of questions. So you, there will be questions where you maybe don't have exactly the perfect answer or you don't feel a bit prepared. I have to tell you, it's not always about getting all the answers right. So let me explain what, what I mean by that. Uh, during the interview, they don't only want to know if you are the right person from a technical point of view, if you have all the skills that they are requiring, but at the same time, they really want to know uh, how you, how are you as a person? Can they work with you? Can they imagine you to be their colleague, like working on projects together or you know, generally interacting with you as a normal person? So uh, try generally to answer questions truthfully and if you don't know something just tell them well I don't know this but you know maybe I can easily learn it or 
generally companies know that uh, learning a new technical skill is much easier than learning a soft skill. So if they if you convince them that you are a pleasant person that uh, they think that uh, they will enjoy working with you, they will look over some technical things that you don't know because they will be confident that they can teach you everything that you you don't know so don't worry so much about questions you cannot answer you should generally try to answer them as good as you can but uh, sometimes it happens that you really don't know how to answer or try to to get the best out of it. during the entire interview try to make a positive atmosphere like don't make everything too serious but not try to be too funny just uh, like try to have a smile on your face or something like that be be friendly be engaging germans are very direct people so uh, when you are being asked something try to get to the point in a reasonable amount of time so just because you're talking doesn't mean that uh, this is really to your advantage so you can give an answer and try to briefly explain why you think this is the right solution or right whatever but try to get to a point try to not speak for minutes and minutes so don't just circle around the answer and if you especially if you don't know something they will tell that you don't know something so just say well i'm i don't really know this instead of uh talking nonsense and because they will say oh my god are we hiring this guy this this guy doesn't know what he's talking about it's i would prefer him to shut up than to uh, to continue that way so it can do more harm if you just talk pointlessly than to say i don't know and, if you know the question, if you know the answer to the questions, just give it in a reasonable amount of time. Don't try to tell the whole story since you were a child or something like that. Try to be humble but confident at the same time. Don't try to be like a smart ass uh, to give the impression that you know everything and that uh, you know the rest of the population, including your ex boss and ex colleagues, were like stupid and you're the smartest one. This will probably not be to your advantage. During the interview, uh, try to look uh, at the persons you are talking to. Try to show a friendly, uh, a friendly face, uh, a friendly face. Uh, smile a bit, uh, be friendly, but certainly look the persons uh, in the eye while you're talking to them. Just don't play with your pencil or something like that. Or uh, you should notice if you have any ticks during an interview. The others in the in the room they will notice that. Uh, you probably won't notice that. So. Um, don't play with anything try to just look at the person you're talking to don't try to show any signs that you're nervous or something like that if you haven't done any interviews before it may be an idea that you interview with a smaller company or with a company you don't really care so much about before your actual interviews so that you can uh, get some experience and get more comfortable interviewing and to just do a general rehearsal before going to after the companies that you're really interested in. And right after the interview, I highly recommend that you take your notebook and uh, make some simple notes inside uh, inside it. Uh, time, um, try to re try to write down how long did the interview take who was attending the interview, what kind of questions did you got, uh, what were the questions where you didn't answer so well so that you can later prepare for the next interviews that you might be having so that you can better answer those interviews uh, and stuff like that. It's very important that you do this right after the interview because at that point everything will be still very fresh in your memory. Uh, you'll notice that even a couple of hours later or a couple of days later uh, your memory may may play some tricks on you so it's important to have this information down so you can later review it. Additionally there are a couple of things that might happen before the interview or after the interview so depending on the company on how their entire process works uh, actually before attending the interview it's quite custom that you will get like a small exercise or you'll have to show a, a project that you've did before like sharing your github account uh, with a project or if you get this exercise, uh, you should uh, try to accomplish it uh, in a timely manner and to send it back for review. It can be a very good idea to uh, have a friend or somebody look over your code uh, just to have a look and give you some feedback in case you missed something. Uh, try to document everything as good as you can. Write clean code, write some tests, uh, write some tests for it, and then submit it. 
if you're submitting something make sure that it's actually working so if you need to send a file maybe don't just send it uh, with one provider just provide them with two links maybe one with Dropbox and one with uh, Google Drive or something like that so in case one link is not working they can download this information from a second link or even better you can just uh, point them to your github account it's uh, a possibility um, other companies might even ask you very technical questions during the interview uh, or might even give you a small exercise or um, some piece of code that you should write um, it really depends on the company I even had interviewed uh, for a company where after the interview they invited me to work there for one day so I actually showed up for work uh, a couple of days later at about 9 or 10 o'clock and I get a list of uh, tasks that I need to do and I was actually with the team inside, inside, the, inside the office I had my own uh, computer and they actually said you can you know like behave like you would normally behave if you have some questions you can even ask your co-workers to help you with something or you can just uh, google everything that you need so uh, you should expect uh, things like that as well uh, there's absolutely no rule uh, on how it can progress from there but uh, it might uh, it might be a way that things go down I hope in this video I managed to uh, give you an overview on how the interview process looks in Germany so that you can better prepare for it. I know it's not covering every possibility so you should be prepared uh, just in case. I hope it helps you. If you have any other questions I would uh, love to answer those. So leave a comment below. If you like this video give it a thumbs up so that I know I should uh, continue doing this and uh, I wish you good luck with your interview as a developer in Germany.